One of my favorite videos to film is this end of season analysis where I look back at what I wore the most and try and see any common themes. So today we're gonna to be running through my spring most worn pieces. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere like I am, I will be posting my summer most worn very soon over on my Substack and my website. So I'll have those linked down below in the description box if you'd like to go and check those out. But for now, let's run through Spring Most Worn and it was kind of interesting when I looked back and I reviewed what it was that I was really drawn to and one of the key things for me was that I was revealing a little bit more skin and this is something that I've absolutely never done. If you watch one of my videos, Trends I Wish Would Go Away, I sort of said I was tired of cutouts and it's kind of interesting because I've done a 180, now I'm actually sort of drawn to them when they're done in a way that feels really right for me. I also found myself really reaching for fuller length silhouettes and this is definitely reflective of the fact that I've got two young children and so I'm mindful that I'm quite often bending over so a lot of really short pieces just do not cut it unless I'm wearing little booty shorts or something like that underneath and it just feels like too much extra work so that was kind of interesting and then I found that I'm still just relying on a lot of those same old classics and you're gonna see some of my favorite pieces popping up that you will have noticed come up in basically every single one of these videos so let's dive right in and we'll talk about my most worn knitwear piece as this really highlights what I was talking about those opening remarks about how I was drawn to revealing little slivers of skin so this is a cardigan from Marl and I will say this sold out really really quickly I remember just checking the iconic constantly until it came back in stock so I could order it for myself and it kind of ended up being one of my favorite purchases of the season I love the fact that it has this really demure sort of style with the high neckline the long sleeves the long length but then it has this revealing factor here in between the placement of the buttons really beautiful and I wore this mostly with a little bralette underneath so I felt covered up I didn't feel like I was showing too much skin but I had this subtly sexy element with the top perfect for a date night but I wore this most with fluid draped trousers something that was really long to counterbalance the fact that this was a little bit more revealing I mean these pearlescent buttons just so so pretty and I will say one thing I've noticed about Marl is that the items that sell out really quickly they tend to bring back and release in a slightly modernized version so worth kind of keeping an eye out on their website for their spring summer collection <laughs> in the end of the year if you missed out on this and you really loved it. My most worn tops I mean one of them is going to be absolutely no surprise my series life step hem t-shirt these are hands down the best t-shirts you can't tell me any different i mean i also love the ones from uniqlo and madewell does a great tee but it is always this for me the high neck the stepped hemline the fact that they're organic cotton they wash really well the fabric is super comfortable i mean i've been wearing and living in mine for years and they've held up really well and also actually one thing to note is that the seams haven't twisted either and i know that can be a real bugbear especially for me when you are wearing lots of t-shirts on repeat so that is fab but also my dish atwood tank which i spotted on the website is half price at the moment these are brilliant. I actually think it's available in most sizes. I think it's one of the most underrated things that they've got on their website. It's a really good classic racerback style that's not too cropped uh, and it does also come in the white as well. So it's such a good basic and I have been wearing mine at least once a week during the summer just because it's been such an easy go-to. Moving on to most worn dress, I actually have three that I all wore the same number of times and to me it's really interesting that there's a striking contrast between the styles. So two of them have that maxi full length silhouette whereas the other one is shorter. And I thought this was really interesting. There's nothing in between at all. And even when I look at what I'm wearing on a regular basis, I wasn't reaching for anything that was shorter. And also I actually just want to quickly take a point to say, I realized when I was pulling all these items out that basically everything is either black, white or gray, mostly black. And that's just reflective of the fact that I've got young children. I really, really want to branch out and be wearing a little bit more color, things that feel a little bit happier, playful, bright, you know, sunshine. So that's kind of one of the key things that I'm looking to add into my closet for 2024. But I'm lucky that with my high contrast features, black, suits me quite a lot. Anyway, uh, most of my dresses, we'll run through them all. So first of all, we've got the pepper dress. So this one here is that full length maxi style. I love this as I think it's one of the most universally flattering styles they have on their website. It has this ruching across the waist, which ties here on the side. And it's all got to do with the way that the fabric gathers across the stomach, I swear. It is otherwise a really basic t-shirt dress. I just like the little slit down the side. This washes so well. And I actually also have the Sabrina style, which is a slightly different tape, but a mini version. And that's really great too for spring, summer. Then the other kind 
kind of longer maxi length dress that I wore loads was the Dish Shannon dress. And I know it's white, but I felt like this was very carefree because it's linen, so very easy to just throw in the wash. And that's actually something that all three of these dresses have in common. They're all easy to care for. And again, I think when you're looking at your most worn pieces, quite often they're going to be really reflective of what your lifestyle needs in that given moment. Uh, this has a beautiful square neckline. This is line two. It's just great and it's come out of the wash looking at like new every time. And then my short dress that was my kind of one of my most worn is this one here from Everlane. It is Dream Dress. This is a really nice stretchy ponty fabric and I think if you're petite you could probably get away with this for the office if you work more of a business casual setting as it would come up just a little bit above the knee as opposed to a couple of inches above the knee like it does on me. Just has a zip closure at the back uh, and it also looks really really cute with a little jacket worn over the top. Intermission for an accessory I think. So most worn bag was actually tied between two bags and it was interesting to me because both of them were in that chocolate brown colour palette and sadly my other most worn bags are one being the Cezanne Claude bag which I absolutely love. Mock croc, the shine to it. Uh, I'll talk about this more in a minute but the other most worn was my Saint Agni woven shoulder bag and unfortunately my cat absolutely destroyed it. I was really heartbroken because I found it on my birthday. It was like the first thing I came downstairs and uh, it was not salvageable. So very disappointing because I'd only owned it for a couple of months and I haven't rushed out to repurchase it as I feel like maybe I would get a different style. Um, if you want more of a review on that bag just let me know in the comments and I'll share all of my thoughts. But this bag here I think it is such a good style. It actually is very reminiscent of the Celine Trotter bag which was one of my most worn bags before I got the iPhone Pro Max size which no longer fits in it so it kind of feels a little bit redundant as I like to be able to put my phone in my bag if I can. The quality of it is really really nice. There's no scratches at all to the actual leather. There is a couple of scratches on the actual hardware which hopefully from the close-ups you will be able to see but nothing that feels overly noticeable and I like the fact that the gold is actually quite a creamy colour as well. This sort of straddles that fine line between dressy and casual silhouettes and I think that's a combination of that luster you get from a patent high shine bag like this and the texture and then the style being a little a bit more casual feeling but brilliant love a chocolate brown bag just a nice way to kind of add in some darker contrast to an outfit without necessarily going for a black piece. We'll do my most worn jeans next and you know it was interesting for me because the most worn style actually ended up being a recent purchase for the season and to me that's a good litmus test. If it ends up showing up my most worn it means I made the right decision. Now these are the Arkhead Rose jeans and they're a cropped straight leg jean in a faded black wash. They have a bit of stretch to them which was really appealing to me and I bought these as a replacement for my totem jeans. Now unfortunately those just do not fit me the same anymore after having two kids. They're just a little bit too tight for me. They're definitely on the smaller side of the size 26. They're kind of closer to a 25 in my opinion so I needed to update them. It was time to really let them go and also I got them professionally tailored and I got them a little bit too cropped for my liking now especially in what my eye settles on and for those wondering what is the perfect crop this is really personal preference but I think hitting the top of your ankle bone is the perfect crop length because then it's not going to ride up too much when you are sitting down. I feel like it also avoids you having too much of that awkward length from the hem of your jeans to where your shoes begin. This has just been such a good go-to. I reach for them a lot especially in the morning when I was doing my daycare run with maybe an oversized sweater or a singlet depending on what the weather was doing. So a great jean and I also just found it really interesting because despite the fact that I have sort of lent more on those full length styles to me, a crop jean is definitely where it's at and will always be. <laughs> okay, most worn skirt. Again, I think you're going to see that common theme coming through. A maxi length skirt. This one is from Dish. It is fully lined as well, which is fab. It's got the side zip closure. This felt like it added in a sense of formality to my outfits. It's elegance that I was craving, especially when I was just wearing it with a simple singlet or a t-shirt. Um, it has this sort of fitted silhouette cut on the bias and then it loots out at the hem which to me is just so pretty and it has such grace when you are moving around in it but yeah I always feel really really good whenever I put this on and I think it's just that drama of the full length. I keep coming back to that word but I feel like it's really the perfect way to describe it. Then we have most worn trousers again there were two pairs that were tied and I love them both for different reasons so they both got pros and cons. So we'll go with the more affordable pair first. These are from Dish, they're their Rowan trouser from their classic suiting line. I think that these are the best 
throw around trouser. They are a great option for the office. The way they are cut is really nice as well, just with the single pleat. I think that they're a really nice length too. Not too wide cut through the leg. Uh, and they're just very, very easy to style, both for work and for the weekend. They're also very easy to care for because you can throw them in the washing machine. The downside of these being that they do pill, and quite considerably too. I can't even tell you the number of times I've had to take my fabric shaver to them to remove any bobbling, and I can actually see a little bit here that I missed on my last little de bobbling session, so I'm going to have to fix that up. To me, that's not really a deal breaker because... If we want our clothes to last, we should be maintaining them and looking after them. And that is kind of part and parcel of the process, but it is something I wanted to mention. If you want a clothing that is really, really fuss free, then maybe these aren't for you. Uniqlo trousers are actually great. And the pair that I have, I've noticed haven't pilled. I don't think that they look quite as elegant on as these because they're a little bit slimmer on the leg, but I think the Uniqlo ones are also fab. And I'll link those down below too. Uh, but the more expensive pair are from Mo & Co. And I think if I had to get rid of all the trousers in my wardrobe, uh, it would be a tie, a toss up between these and my facade pattern trousers. Those two are my absolute favorites. The way that these just hang and drape, it is so refined. I just feel like this, these are a thing of beauty in my mind. I like the fact that they've got the matching belt. Again, it kind of has a sense of elegance to it. They also have the pin tuck pleat down the front as well. But the fabric is a triacetate blend from memory. And it almost looks like a woven cotton twill with a bit of linen or kind of rami or something like that blended into it. It's it's really interesting fabric, but it has a really soft drape to it. You can kind of see how easily it moves around and floats around, which I think is a really huge part of the appeal. The downside to these is they are a little bit more precious than the dish ones. I tend to reserve these for when I'm working or when I'm going out, just as they're dry clean only, and I really don't want to risk getting my kids' grubby fingers all over them. Most worn denim shorts, I mean... Did we think it was going to be anything else? The Emmeline A-Line denim shorts, the best in my opinion. I've got a couple of other favorites in my wardrobe that I'm really enjoying wearing on rotation, but it's always the style that I come back to. Love the wide opening through the leg. I just think it is incredibly flattering the way it cinches in at the waist. I'm actually wearing the blue ones here as well. <laughs> I just think they're a great all-rounder and they've held up so well. I actually ended up selling my size 26 in the black and I repurchased them in the 25 which fits me a lot better. These do fit a size large in my opinion uh, but always worth checking the measurements on the Everlane website if you have been eyeing them up and thinking about buying some for yourself. Finally, let's talk about my most worn shoes. So these are again from Everlane. It is their Day Ballet Flats and this is the kind of tobacco orange color I also ended up buying these in the black just because I found these were a really great option. I will say though, I think now my Margot ballet flats are my favorite in terms of comfort and I actually kind of like the more classic van where it doesn't come too high up the foot, but I digress. These are a really great runabout, throwabout shoe. You will be able to see from the cutaways that these have been well loved. There is so much creasing to them. I've actually got a couple of scuffs on this tobacco pair where the, uh, leather is peeling because I knocked them or I scraped them against something. I have really worn these to death and they still have quite a lot of life left in them. I mean, I haven't needed to replace a sole or anything yet, which is kind of, I think, testament to their insurance <laughs> or their durability, should I say. They've just kind of been the shoe I reach for when I'm doing daycare drop-off, when I'm just running around the house, when I'm running to do some quick errands and I want something that looks a little bit put together, but that feels comfortable, easy, on the foot it's always these sizing on these is uh standard so i got my usual everlane shoe size which is a nine and a half i'm a european 40 or an au or us9 typically everlane shoes just have their own sizing system i've found um, but yeah they're really fun and i like the little classic ballet style i think you can actually tighten these as well around the vamp if needed also a little shout out to the anderson's belt i now have this in two colors the dark chalk croc leather which I'm wearing here and then also in the black it is my everyday go-to belt and is the one that I always recommend whenever someone asks me where to buy a belt from. So that kind of rounds out my most worn spring pieces or I suppose I should say my spring style staples. I hope that you found this video insightful or at least that it gave you some outfit inspiration or maybe some mini reviews on some of the pieces that I have in my wardrobe. As always a huge thank you for watching spending a little bit of your day with me. I'm always so grateful if you're 
new here and you want to subscribe, I would love to have you back. And I will see you next week with a brand new video. See you very soon. Bye.